Have a great day to all the kapuso, kaibigan, kabarkada, and especially to the kapamilyas. This day, we will be tackling one of the hottest issue in our midst, which is cyst and deceased ABS-CBN, my viewpoint, illuminating the issue through reasons. Again, have a great day, dear vlog aficionados. To start with this vlog, the content provider, Rose Gonzaga Jr., known to my students as Sir Noy, would like to issue first this important notice and disclaimer. Notice and Disclaimer The Jervin Eagle Viewpoints Vlog Community supports the rule of law and the government actions implemented to ABS-CBN but is exercising the freedom of expression to air the unheard side of the point in this issue. All argumentations and rationalizations hereby mentioned are not public declarations but just a personal opinion on the issue. This is your content provider, Rose Gonzaga Jr., implementing and adhering to this display. Our biblical gem for this moment is found in Isaiah 1 verse 18. It says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Again, our topic of the moment is cis and deceased abs cbn my viewpoint this is illuminating the issue through reasons let us first present the issue to our dear vlog community abs cbn auto broadcasting system consolidated broadcasting network had been served a cease and desist order by the National Telecommunications Commission or NTC, meaning it should close and be off-air status right away. It has been known that government through the visible touch of the executive department had been laying down cases against this big network and this vlog supports the fact that error should be faced and if penalty is needed, it should be given in the most logical and conscientious way. There is no issue for this, dear vlogmates, for the law is always a law and it should be implemented to all people regardless of status and societal identification. However, let us analyze some gray areas in this cease and disease order. First, it was the order of no less than the chief executive of this country, the president, that no companies will be closed as the COVID emergencies is still existing. A good example of this is in the services of a certain agency. A driver with an expired license is being allowed to drive his vehicle now because there is an impending abnormality in the procedures of the bureaucracy. Thus, the question, is this order selective in implementation or just alliance-based in jurisdiction is something worth asking. Second, ABS-CBN as a media network is a bastion of media history for this country. No other network can connect the dots if we want to write the history of media existence in our very own Philippines. That is still evident now as majority of the Filipino population who cannot afford a smartphone or has no computer at home still tune in to Radio DZMM, the radio arm of ABS-CBN, and to Free Air TV, which is ABS-CBN Channel 2. This is a source of their news, pressers, 
and even update and health education regarding the health pandemic that we are facing recently. If we are in war, and then there is a case of bouncing check to one of your effective generals on the ground, on the war ground, will you pull out the general and give the reason that it is for the, ge it is for the greater good? Well, judge it for yourself, dear vlogmates. Third, there are always ways to commune a law with another law. The point is, if this was not ABS-CBN, there could have been ways that the executive could have intervened as well as Congress in a hurried descent. The point is, the law was applied in the sense of personal vengeance to a network that made some decisions that may have been politically wrong, but rather decisions that are institutionally defendable and explainable. This is concerning the TV ad of our chief executive now, which was not allowed to air on this station. This is wrong. We are not contesting it to be right because this is really wrong. So why not press charges in the right court and apply it after this time of quarantine and crisis? However, the flavor becomes more interesting because that ad was not aired May 5 of the election season. And now, ABS-CBN was also closed May 5 of the pandemic season. Thus, there is no claim of political maneuvering. Again, there is no claim of political maneuvering. Never. The only capitulation here is, the leeways we give to other entities, especially those that helped us, should also be the same entities we give to the people who hated us. Because election is already over and winners are already ruling. Fourth, there was a hurried and emergency caucus to right away permit POGO to operate in our country. What is POGO? This is offshore gambling or offshore casino gambling. Well, there are a lot of revenues here and government is very blessed of its existence, no question with that. The point is, in times of crisis, we need media to connect the whole country and let each and every Filipino be educated of what to do. Now we're talking about ABS-CBN, the media with the highest and longest and widest reach in terms of population in this country. We don't need people to gamble and set aside a little for government to have something on its slowly empty emptying pockets. Now our simple question is, Pogo is controversial, but they found ways to expedite the permits that it needed during these times for it to be operational again. But media outfits are essential to communication and to systemic connections. But technicalities and bureaucratic legalities chained it so that it can be served with a legal remedy. That is correct legally. But morally, it could have been more improved. Fifth and last, government agencies are singing different tunes in this issue. National Telecommunications Commission committed to Congress both to the House of Representatives through Speaker Cayetano and the Senate through Speaker uh, through Senate President Vicente Soto III on the provisional authority that will be granted, but at a buckshot when the target is not looking, a solid sharply hit gun fired, and th this shocked the Congress and the Secretary of Justice of the Republic of the Philippines who shared the same opinion with the Congress. Thus, if you come to think of it, if one battalion of soldiers goes to war, and on the process of fighting a common enemy, there are some of them that shoots at their companion because of different interpretations of a principle and inability to come up with a proper and harmonized decision as a battalion. 
We call this in war zones as friendly fires. Most of the time, friendly fires cripple the battalion more because it is coming from the inside. It is with great hope that government can function and generate actions that would complement each other. There is no question to the check and balances of each government position and government agencies. The question is, who is respecting the other in terms of ideating an action? Because if things like this continue to happen, and one government arm wrestles with another, then it is the credibility and respect to government that is the collateral damage here. Dear vloggers, Kapuso, Kapatid, Kabarkada, and especially to my Kapamilyas, while we are shying away and defending some government actions of extrajudicial killings for the reasons of drug trafficking and the continuous invective communicative methods of some government officials, which already killed the censorship of language on media and other platforms, the attention and the resources allotted to crack down a close as a media network or what are we trying to say, to close down and crack out a media network is a gigantic diversion from the expected focus given on the real pyramiding issues fronting our country today. While we can see that ABS-CBN violated some rules which this vlog community supports for investigation and application of penalty in the right time, it is as if we are tolerating insensible killings but willing to kill a sensible source of national information. While we can tolerate the cursings and the invective prone languages of some of our respected leaders, we turned off the operation of media mouthpieces and let them suffer the fate of being in the opposite side of the fence. Thus, I want to repeat my stand on this issue as a vlogger and a content provider and at the same time, a social science educator. This vlog is not against penalizing the culprits because they should be. But it should be done in the right time and in the right frame of implementation. This vlog is not pro-ABS-CBN per se. But for the harmonized and homogeneous action of government as not to be selective on its clumping capability on organizations and systems that may not be in their line of affiliation. This vlog supports responsible press delivery system and that is why ABS-CBN needs to have its day in court and penalties will be met. This vlog is merely trying to open our eyes that the unprecedented speed to apply the cuffs on a performing entity and one that has no tax liability, one that deploys its people even if there is a health threat for them, is something that we need to give an optical reconsideration. Dear vloggers, this vlog is not published to answer a specific media blitz or to defend a systemic affiliations or to answer to another person's accusations or to create a clear division of allegiances. This vlog was aired to allow the maxim, proceed when you have heard the two sides of the coin. This is your humble content provider for the Jervin Eagle Viewpoints Freelance Vlogging. Pros Gonzaga Jr., known to my students as Sernoy, saying, Let us not confuse rule of law to personal vendetta. Let us not confuse authority with opinionated actions. Let us give everybody the equal chance to see the productive resultants in angles of the points. God bless and mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Hey,